Hey, all my Gemini friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with your August 2024 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I'm talking about Gemini, I'm referring to Gemini rising as the first house and dictating the landscape of the chart. This is also applicable to Gemini sun and Gemini moon, as well as if you have three or more personal planets in Gemini. When I refer to a day and a time, it's based on the Pacific time zone, and I will be verbally telling you the houses as we walk through the month. Uh, the chart does not stay on Gemini rising. All right, the month starts really powerfully, I think, because we have in your first house, Jupiter, making aspects to Pluto and Saturn. Jupiter is uh, growing into a square with Saturn, which is going to uh, become exact later in the month. This will happen three times um, later in 2024. I think it's December and then again in January 2025. So there's going to be a revisiting of beliefs and established beliefs are going to be in conflict with potentially expansion of beliefs. Uh, there could be even for you personally, some challenges with uh, your career, with your um, how people have perceived you in your career because uh, Pisces is your 10th house. It's the public eye. And if there have been challenges within your career or things have felt like they haven't moved forward very quickly, uh, there could be a redefinition in your own mind of what's important to you. The square and a half to Pluto to me is very, very powerful because a square is in and of itself challenging. And now we're adding another layer onto that. And Pluto rules that deep psychological gripping fear that keeps us paralyzed somewhere. Um, it rules the transformation of it, but in the human experience, oftentimes it is something that sits underneath us that haunts us and prevents us from moving forward. We don't, we're not even aware of it. And this could be reflected here in Saturn's energy. So we're looking at Aquarius, which is your ninth house of your beliefs. It's moving back into your eighth house of transformation, which is Capricorn. And Capricorn for you is ruling other people's money. It's ruling uh, where you feel resources or an exchange of resources. It rules by nature, the eighth house rules death and rebirth, which we call the Phoenix rising from the ashes. It rules the power other people have over us in the form of money and sex. Uh, it rules the billionaires and it rules really intimate and um, vulnerable sex. It's a very polarizing house Scorpio. And so here, when we have this Capricorn energy, something's happening to transform you from being restricted, limited, feeling a sense of obligation or duty within how your resources roll, how your finances roll, whether you receive them or you give them. And this square and a half is in your first house could really have you on some level redefining how you see yourself. Now, Jupiter is considered in detriment in Gemini and because it's the furthest from its rulership. But I believe that Jupiter is a natural traveler and the further away it goes, the more it has to learn and it loves to learn. So here it's learning about how the human actually operates, how the mind is, you know, gets caught up in this uh, going back and forth uh, trying to figure out all the options. We also know that Gemini naturally rules information and communications and Jupiter inadvertently can think that people are understanding concepts and it needs a little bit more definition. So that's going to come into play a little later when we look at your ruling planet. So this is how the month starts. We also see that at the beginning of the month, we see that Mercury has moved into its rulership. Now, not only is Mercury powerful because it's in rulership, it is also exalted in Virgo. And Virgo is your fourth house. So you could be feeling, and this is going to grow a little bit before we see Mercury go retrograde in a few days. So Mercury is starting to station here. And this growing or 
what I should say, this square to Mars could very well be bringing up some arguments with your family members. You know, we, we could see children here. We could see siblings. We could see cousins. We could see even, you may not even be expressing them on the outside, but you may be feeling them on the inside. Uh, that Mars is feeling challenged here, uh, wanting to express itself in a, in a blunt way, and that doesn't necessarily work. We also see that Venus over here is at towards the end of her time in Leo. And I think that this here is important because in, in a few days, Venus will move into Virgo and Mercury will move retrograde. So they're going to merge. And in that merger, the thoughts will be about, am I valuable? Am I, are, is the things that I want really available to me? The, Leo is your third house. And the third house is naturally the house that you rule. So it rules communication and communication and entertainment and self-expression, having the Leo uh, layover, meaning the, the levels. So I think there's going to be a lot coming into the forefront of, of how you're thinking. Now, the fourth is a huge day. We have a new moon. We have um, Mercury retrograding, Venus entering Virgo. So let's go there and we'll start with the full moon. I'm sorry, new moon in Leo. This is going to happen at 4.13 a.m. Pacific time. And this is in your third house. This new moon is offering you an opportunity to plant seeds of thought for how to express yourself, your leadership, your courage, your um, allowing yourself to have more fun. We see this nice trine over here to uh, the North Node in your um, 11th house. The 11th house rules our hopes and our dreams. It also rules our social networks. It also rules the future. Naturally ruled by Aquarius, we're looking out to the future to go where no man has gone before over there in that 11th house energy. And I think that's important because here we see this is at the eighth degree. The new moon is at the eighth degree, giving you a favorable aspect for your pioneering into a sense of yourself and expressing that self in a way, and I, I want to offer this Gemini, because when I say expressing, I'm not really talking about expressing to other people. I mean, yes, they will witness it, but this is you being authentic to you, not worrying about other people necessarily, especially when you think about the Aries energy. Now we have this nice sextile to Jupiter and to um, Mars. Again, the growing conjunction can be perceived two ways. It can be bravery to, to on my going into new uh, territories with business, with commerce, with my in, you know, Jupiter rules publishing and writing and branding and marketing in, in addition to foreign places, foreign people and higher education and the Supreme Court. So there's a lot going on in this particular um, genre. But here for you in your first house, to me, this is planting the seeds for yourself. You know, here's Jupiter at 15 degrees. It's the Gemini degree. Here's the ninth degree of, of Mars indicating that Sagittarian beliefs degree, Jupiter's degree. So what do you want? How will you start to focus your thoughts on things that serve you in a way that brings more fun, more sense of leadership, of owning your own life and within your community? Again, third house is your neighborhood, your workmates, your teammates, your the moms at school, the, the guys at the golf club, the riding team, you know, things where you where you interact with other people and it can be both fun because we've got Leo, but it can also be creative and it can be a work thing. And I think because Saturn's in your 10th house that there's some things going on there. So now let's go to later in the day, because again, this is a big day. I'm going to go to about 10 PM because by that time we have both Venus has entered her fall of Virgo. Uh, so she's not feeling her sexiest here. She's extremely practical. She's extremely uh, wanting to get down to business. You know, she may start a uh, exercise routine, but she also may start thinking about 
how her everyday life is relating to her health. And here, you, this is your fourth house. So how is your home life relating to you feeling like you're thriving in the world, feeling like you're you're enjoying your life? Again, we just saw the, uh, the new moon in your third house and Mercury is retrograding. So Mercury is going to move back this way. Venus is going to move this direction. And while Venus is experiencing what I think is a transit yod. Okay. So here we see zero degrees. Pluto is in a blind spot to zero degrees Venus. And here we have Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces in your 10th house. I, I really think that this is a focal point that you can't see, that there is the potential that you have evolved into a place that you haven't experienced rooted in your, in your everyday life. And now is an opportunity to start to connect to the divinity within, to, to be aware of your words and how they resonate in the world or resonate out into the universe. Uh, again, you know, this Virgo energy is your fourth house. This retrograde starts at the fourth degree. So I want to emphasize home and hearth and how you self-nurture, how you take care of yourself. Do you let your mind send you down a rabbit's hole of contemplation or too many short bits of information that don't serve a bigger picture? The quincunxes are, are a spot where you don't see you don't see your worth potentially. You don't see the potential to make money. You don't see your skills. And this is where I think there's a real transformation being offered because Mercury just went through this yacht and Mercury is about to go through it again because these two planets are, are slow moving and they're creating a sextile to one another. So when we surrender to this deep imprint, this psychological paralysis that we don't even know is there, the story of I'm always poor, or I never get the guy, or I never get what I want, or I'm not lucky, that's a repetitive story, Mercury, that doesn't serve you. It it's kicks in the laws of the universe as, as reflected by Neptune. And Neptune's at 29 degrees, the master number of thought, reduces down to an 11. Super, super powerful time right now. I don't know, maybe I just see too many deep layers into everything, but I cannot help myself because they just seem to burst out onto the screen for me. So Mercury will retrograde from the fourth at four degrees of Virgo to 21 degrees of Leo before moving back, um, moving forward again on the 28th of, of August. It will retrograde back into Leo on the 14th of August at the same time that we will experience Mars and Jupiter in an exact conjunction at 16 degrees. So let's go to the 14th. Um, again, as I said in the beginning of the video, this yod idea is playing out in the background of all the other transits for me. So this month has a similar theme connecting it. Hold on, let me click off here real quick. Okay, so now on the 14th, we see that Jupiter and um, Mars are an exact conjunction in your first house. This is a polarizing dynamic. I think people will be very emotional. We see an opposition over here to the moon. And while the moon moves fairly quickly, uh, Sagittarius is your um, seventh house. And I, I think that what I'm feeling is, again, professional partnerships versus uh, marriages I feel as if there's a big transformation for Gemini within their public eye and how they see each themselves or how people have seen you. And now you have a real opportunity to look into what you need emotionally. What is it that, that makes you feel a sense of peace and harmony and balance in your life? Because this, now we see a very tight square to Saturn. Uh, we see a square to Venus we see the continued square and a half to Pluto. And Pluto is just about to move back into Capricorn any minute now. So this is going to be, and I want to offer this too, because people could be really, really inflamed about their beliefs. They could get very, uh, a little bit over the top about things. This is like, whenever I look at this conjunction, I think people will be pulling political signs off other people's lawns because they're pissed off. 
And I feel like if you know people that piss you off, don't engage. Again, we have Mercury's retrograde now at the powerful zero degree, about to move back into Leo, making this quincunx to Pluto and Neptune. So the best way to manage this is to go in, into your meditative places, into those places where you can actually feel a sense of relief from, from in your mind. And I think that's to focus on what you want, regardless of what's going on in the outside world. So, and I would be very careful on the roadways as, as well these days. People will be driving so flipping fast and cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I just be, I would be very mindful. Venus was making an aspect I wanted to talk about. Oh yes. And now Venus is um starting. Venus is interesting here because while she's not really in a, a tight square or a tight opposition with these planets, Mars and uh, Jupiter or Saturn, it, it, having her in Virgo is making me, she's making me feel as if she's starting to think that she needs to somehow get down to business. And she's sort of fighting an old habit, an old habit of working herself through an issue versus feeling herself through an issue. And so if you as a Gemini rising are trying to work yourself, you know, through a problem or out of something mentally, physically, you know, taking action, I think that's what's creating the tension. And that's, that's the blind spot that you're not seeing here with Mercury to these two planets, Neptune and Pluto. Oh, such a powerful, powerful month. Okay. Now let's go to the 19th where we'll experience a full moon in Aquarius at 27 degrees. That's going to happen at 11.25 a.m. Pacific time. And I think this is really powerful because 27th degree is the Gemini degree. Now, how I sort of see these degrees, um, especially the degrees that have three opportunities, the first uh, five houses do, is a, a, a series of maturity, I guess. When we're at that third degree of Gemini, we're, we're young, we're kind of new at it. Then when we get to the 15th degree, we're more like a teenager, maybe a college student, we've learned something. Now at the 27th degree, there's an offer, opportunity to master this idea. And this Aquarian idea is about what's my personal genius? What do I want to experience? What do I want to to live. Mercury is sitting right next to the sun. And while Mercury is considered combust, any planet is next to the sun, Mercury always travels close to the sun. It's used to the heat. Mercury is technically the hottest planet in our solar system. I know we think Mars is the red planet, the hot planet, but it's really Mercury. And so this could be very much this tension between the mind and the emotions and just wanting to like Calgon, take me away. I just want to be gone. I want to be liberated. Look at this as a natural um, a T square to, to Uranus. So both the sun at 27 degrees and the moon are focusing on individuality, on liberation, on some sort of rebellion that takes you outside of the old and into the new again the taurus energy 12th house is something that's that is ancestral your soul has a habit of thinking and that habit of thinking is reflected in your south node in your nail chart but here in the 12th house it could be that you have obligations to home to hearth to making sure you feel a sense of security and safety and and that's kind of messing you up because trying to be safe is actually clipping you and that could be the square from uh jupiter to saturn from actually expanding you know, it's like, you're so, I've got to be practical. I've got to be practical. Look at Venus right now. She's in this very, there's another T-square. I've got two T-squares at the time of this full moon. So much illumination going on. So much telling us, what do you believe? Will you take action? Will you allow history to to, to teach you versus to repeat itself. And I, I, I wrestle a little bit with the word teach because I don't think it's teach. I think it's more of an example so that we can make informed choices. So powerful. And let me quickly reiterate that um, uh, Jupiter will square Saturn three times 
And in those three times offer us opportunities to really review and reflect on our belief system and our own personal expansion and what might be contracting us. And in your case, your 10th house, your 10th house is where that, that very public place where you can either be a leader and, and demonstrate your ambition or be clipped by it because Saturn could throw you into obligation, you know, feeling a sense of history. And if I don't do this, nobody will. And that's a challenge. That's a real challenging thought. So this is a really powerful. You can see that the chart itself is looking between the quincunxes going on and that like transit yacht, I like to call it. And then all the T-squares, T-square to Uranus, T-square from Venus to uh, Saturn and Mars and Jupiter. It's going to be very tense and it's going to illuminate something and something that could put people in a really rebellious frame of mind. So I just think really to, to, if you know, there are people that you think differently from and that you have, uh, you know, sort of these borderline love hate relationships with I would I would take a few days off from them during this time to be honest I'd be I wouldn't want to get into conflict okay so now we're going to go to the 22nd I'll put this back to noon hopefully the sun will have moved we'll see and the sun should be in Virgo yes and it is now the focal point of this yod this transit yacht, this is my term. I don't know if it's a real term. I'm just, it's making sense to me. Yacht is the finger of God, a focal point that offers me choice. And in this place, it's choice to express and look at things from my divinity, from my soul's perspective, which may not make any sense to the outside world. None, zero, zip. But that's where the power comes. And that's where Jupiter and Mars is transiting your first house could really display something wildly magical. Again, it's going to take a lot of awareness and intention to, to uh, focal, focus beyond what is going on around us, which is those yods. And again, we saw Venus, Mercury twice already, and the sun yeah, forming that, that yod. And, Venus, and Mercury will go back over that spot meaning for a third time. All right, let's go now to the 28th where Mercury will be direct. And a little later in the day, let's go to 10 p.m. And Mercury has gone direct. Again, this is uh, in your third house. So this is giving you an opportunity to really, again, start to reflect on, am I enjoying myself enough? Am I having fun? Uh, what I think is very interesting also about this day is now Venus is at 29 degrees of Virgo. She's about to enter her domicile, probably pretty happy to uh, focus on things that are more comforting and more luxurious. But before she does, she's getting into a, a little bit of a tense conversation with Neptune, which is usually they get along, right? But here, this is where Venus's practicality could be a little bit of a hangover here as she enters this, this Libra energy of your fifth house of creation of fun. Uh, but when I say fun, I mean the Leo energy that overlays the fifth house, entertainment. So, you know, you may still be thinking, I have things to do to make money to do. And Neptune's like, you might be burning yourself out a little bit. It might be time to rest. It might be time to play some music, to dance in your living room, have a little bit of fun because you're going to need it. And this is supported by being a little rebellious here with Uranus. Venus is uh, trying to Uranus. Now, yes, there is that Mars energy giving her a little nonsense in your first house, that square, but that's you thinking, I got to take action. I got to take action. And sometimes no action is action. And whatever you as a Gemini rising find luxurious, peaceful, harmonious, and truly relaxing that gives you a sense of serenity, I think that would be something to employ upon these days. Venus is about to be in a trine now. 
So this is where the transformation can reveal itself. And while transformation doesn't happen overnight, it's a process. It's a series of experiences and revelations and awarenesses that bring this forth, this transformation. So now we see favorable aspects from from Uranus and from Pluto. And Pluto is making favorable aspects to Uranus. So we like that. All right, now let's go to the 29th, where Venus has now entered her rulership. Now she's approaching the supergalactic center. The supergalactic center is focused on relationships. But the human tends to default to the relationship they have with other people. The supergalactic center is the relationship you have with yourself, the theme that you are source energy, that everything you need, you have the ability to create using your senses, using your mind to focus your thoughts, your speech to focus your vibration when you speak, your um, eyes to look at the things that bring you closer to that versus the things that create obstacles. This is a very, very powerful time because here Venus is in her rulership and the center is focused within her domain. And this is something that Venus uh, very much wants to experience because as she also rules Taurus, she doesn't like feeling insecure. So when she starts to recognize that her talents and her skills are fostering her abundance, this is something that Gemini can really capitalize on. And it may not be easy again, because you are again, mercurial ruled, but this isn't about your mind. This is about your heart and your connection to source, and then using those senses to support that connection. And now... Another thing that I wanted to bring up. Let's go to the last day of the month. And um, Mercury hasn't moved much. Mercury hasn't moved just barely one degree um, in the last couple of weeks, or not last, I shouldn't say the last couple of days, excuse me. And um, again, this is really to anchor in those thoughts of, you know, how do I take my Leo energy, my third house energy, and focus my communication into expressing myself with courage from my heart to myself? Venus is on the super galactic center. Well, she's crossed it over this last few days. It's actually at two degrees, 22 minutes of Libra. And she's within orb and will be in orb. And the south node in your fifth house is really about being egoless to other people's uh, or other people's opinions or the relationships you have with them while you're anchoring in this strong sense of self as source. We still see uh, these. Uh, now we see a, um, a quincunx to Mars, but we also see Saturn creating some quincunxes here like to the moon. These are going to be in play, these little blind spots, because the blind spots for me during this month are about uh, kind of getting out of my head again and into my heart and asking my heart if my soul has, you know, contracted for some experience that I didn't want to have. Because again, here's Mercury at 22 degrees, making a trine aspect over here to your 11th house Chiron. And the 22nd degree is a bit of a challenging degree in some schools of thought, but it also represents the master number of partnership and cooperation. And this is a cooperation with your individuality. Gemini is ruled by the twins and your sense of, of self. You're wanting to feel a sense of your own enjoyment and pleasure. And this kind of combo right now at this time, the last day of the month, you could feel a little emotional revolution wanting, you know, like I'm, I'm taking no prisoners. I want to do me for a change. And there's nothing wrong with that, really, honestly. So it's a big, um, I think it's a big month, mostly because of the aspects that Pluto is making to Mercury, uh, and Pluto and Neptune making to Mercury and Venus, Mercury twice uh, this month and Venus once and the sun once. Uh, these are these are these little hauntings in the back of our head that we don't even know why we feel them or what they are. They just make us feel uneasy. 
And this is really a call to your inner being. This is a call from your soul saying, connect with me and you'll feel safe and you'll feel a sense of, of uh, expansion moving forward versus contraction. All right, my Geminis, that's it for August 2024. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. If you'd like to book a reading me with me, my information is below. Feel free to reach out and please join me Sunday mornings where we do a live stream and we uh, do a tarot card and an angel reading for each one of the signs and get the angel's advice for traversing the week ahead's transits. All right, everybody, please like, please subscribe, please share, and please comment. Sending lots of love to you. Have a lovely, lovely August. <laughs>